Today we're going to look at crypto matte masking and how you can use that for special effects with lighting and everything else inside Cinema 4D and Octane. My current scene setup, I have these two large angry action figures dancing. They're having a nice little dance off. And I have only two lights in the scene. I have an ambient light and I have an area light. And this is going to be important because we're going to use the crypto mat to kind of spotlight each one of these characters differently when we want to. And I'm going to show you how to set that up right now. It's pretty easy and it's really powerful. So let's dive in. If we come up here to our render settings and we head all the way over to render AOV manager within the Octane tab, uh, we scroll down, we're going to see render AOVs. And this is where we need to enable the crypto mat. Um, so we can add an AOV and it's going to be inside the auxiliary crypto mats going to be very at the very top. I already have one, so I'm going to enable it um, or else you just go to auxiliary and click on that. And your default will probably be material node name, but we're going to switch over to geometry node name and I'll show you why. If we go to, the, go to our um, AOV pass right here, toggle this info, um, we can see how these are separated and they're separated by um, they're separated by geometry node name. So if we have a bunch of different, you know, cloners and objects in here, it's all going to be separated within its own little clown pass, this crypto mat. And this is going to allow us to select these in real time, which is really awesome. If we had material um, node name selected, we're also going to get that separation. But if you have certain objects that have the same material, uh, they're all going to be the same color. You're not going to be able to separate them differently. So I like to go with geometry node name, at least for this instance. So now we have that set up and that's really all we need. So now we can go over to output AOV compositor and we can create ourselves a new AOV output. And I already have one, but if you did not have one set up, you're going to go to add output AOV and this is going to add one and you're going to have these layering options. Um, if you open these up, we have all the different layers and we've had some um, tutorials on these in, in the past and I'll link those below, but I'm going to remove this one because we don't really need this and remove output AOV and I'm going to show you what I mean when I open this one up and we could build out layers here within our layering um, and we can move them around with these nice layering options that are added recently but I'm going to open up the node editor because I like to do my compositing within this node editor and what you're going to see let me enable this is remove remove this is what you'll see right here um, and this right here is our render AOVs, and we cannot use these for the compositing, so I separate them. And this is going to be our output AOV, and this is going to be our group that we're going to do all of our compositing with. And you'll have no layers assigned yet. It'll just be, you know, just this output AOV. You can name it whatever you like. I'm going to keep it like that for now. And then you can start adding layers. You can add layers here, or you can click on this little pencil icon and start adding to it. What you're going to want to do is add a layer group. And the groups are like containers. They're like... Photoshop groups or containers that you're going to do edits and adjustments within. So we're going to add one layer group and let me remove all of these for now um, and take this back down to one. So we add one layer group and just start that from scratch. You can drag and drop. You can right click. You can scroll down here to the bottom and all of these gray um, nodes. These are your AOV um, compositing nodes, but I'm just going to drag and drop and go layer group. And within this layer group, I'm going to add another layer, or not yet. I'm going to drag and drop and add a render AOV. And this render AOV is going to be our beauty. And what that means is our output one down here and our main are going to be the identical, the exact same, because we're assigning this layer one as our beauty, which is just our you know, straight render output. So from here, um, and I had that set right here, we can start adding on and let's add another layer. And for this layer, um, I'm going to add ambient light. So now this replace, this trumps, because this is uh, no blending options, this trumps over our beauty. So this is pretty much identical to us taking that scene object, that area light, and turning it off. And now we just have that ambient. And come back over here. That is exactly what it's doing. Um, come over here, output one, and we have you know, our beauty, even though it's not, not refreshing. And now we have, actually I have the light off, here we go. Our beauty, and now we have just our ambient light. 
So I separated those two. I have just this ambient light going on and I want to denoise it too. So I'm going to add one more layer and I'm going to use open image denoising. So I'm going to plug that in and the same thing. If we just drag and drop, we can type in um, open, open image denoise and I just use the default values. And that's just going to add denoiser. And it's a really, really fast denoiser. You can see how there's noise going on right here. And now there's no noise because this happens in real time. It's really, really fast. It's a great denoiser. Um, and it, sometimes it can be a little bit overboard and a little bit too smooth, but I'm going to leave that on because it's nice. So that is our, our basic you know, set up just to get that ambient light pass. And we stripped back from the, the beauty to um, pass because we had that you know, area light that we're going to separate later. So now let's add another layer um, back to our output AOV group. And this is where we're going to add, again, another layer group. And these layer groups, like I said, they're the containers where we're going to do all of our edits and we can stack them. We can use blending options within them. We can't do blending options over here. That's why we have to add the layer group. And you can see you can just enable things and disable things and move things up and down the hierarchy, but you can't add blending options. And the blending options are important um, especially for what we're doing. So we're going to change this to add. Actually, let's keep it on normal for now so you can see. And we're going to add another render AOV. And this render AOV is going to be our light pass. So we're just going to go render AOV down to light and then go to uh, not ambient, not sunlight, light pass one. And now what we have, here's our main, it has both our ambient and our area light. Um, and this is just our area light. And so now it has this kind of cool spotlight effect. We took away, you know, all the other lights in the scene and this layer group is only this light. We have it on normal, so it's not doing anything, you know, to influence what's below. So if we switch this blending mode and this layer group over to add, we have exactly, again, you know, what our beauty was showing. We're just adding our area light right here on top of our ambient light. Um, and if we took off this, uh, this ambient light pass right here, what we're doing is we're adding that area light again. So we're like doubling the effect of the exposure, the luminosity of that area light back over top of, of everything. So you can see that right here, this is one to one. And now adding that area light makes it even brighter. But we're gonna enable this ambient because we wanna have this separated. And again, add another layer to our layer group and we're gonna plug in this open image denoise. So we're gonna denoise that light. So everything's nice and smooth again. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. We don't want this area light to hit everything. We just want to use this area light on either object. So we can go ahead and add another layer, and this layer is going to be our mask. If we type in mask, we have mask with crypto mat. And we're going to add that. And delete this, delete this. And since we have our crypto mat enabled up here, and you can scroll over here from this, um, from here in the node graph and get to your geometry node name and you can switch that from here so you don't have to go back into your um, AOV settings and the render settings. You can switch this to whatever you like from here. I'm going to leave it back at geometry node name and mask with crypto mat. We got to make sure we switch this to the same thing. This is material node name. We're going to click it and we're going to drop down on geometry node name. So it's the exact same and now everything went dark because nothing is uh, enabled. You can see in this list right here, um, there's nothing in there. And we can clear it anytime, or we can click on this blue icon, and that's gonna open this inside your live viewer so you can start clicking on things. Um, if we disable it, it you know disappears. If we enable it, it comes back, and we can start clicking. And this is where instantly, when we click on one thing, it adds over to the mats. We click on another one, and then we can de-click, click, click, so now you can see how really cool and powerful this is. We can start adding light wherever we want. And this isn't just for lighting. We can use this crypto map mask for anything. We can add special effects. We can add, you know, post effects. We can add whatever we want with crypto map masking. This is why it's so powerful and it's real time. Everything's already, you know, pre-rendered and we're just, you know, compositing this now as we like. Um, so along the dance, we could have the green guy, you know, highlighted. And then, you know, later on, turn the light off, turn it back on the red guy. And we don't have to worry about doing this compositing later. Um, we could animate it this way. We could do all of these cool things, internal compositing, you know, while we're working through our scene. Um, here's our beauty and here's our output.
and that's all just through this crypto map mask so that's really nice and then obviously we can add another layer um and i already have one actually so i'm just gonna remove layer and do uh actually i need to add another layer because it won't propagate so add a layer and connect this and enable this and these are just you know add chromatic aberrations and bloom and remove hot pixel i always do all of these effects and your camera imaging effects at the end um, because you don't want to influence those you know early on and i use a layer um, pass through group for this and just like photoshop everything below is getting passed through so i can add you know chromatic or aberration um, i can add tons of bloom um, remove hot pixels all of that i can i can do you know at the at the very end and i can disable this um, and then go back to my comp and rework so this is pretty simple i mean we just have everything separated two layer groups in our output aov group and then we just have two different setups we have our light here our light here and we don't even need this beauty we could have just started with the ambient light i just always like to add a beauty first um, and then we have our mask our crypto matte mask so crypto matte mask clear it off enable and as simple as that